love going over fish, seeing the fish underneath, and, and they seem to be totally unconcerned about uh, whether you're there or not until you put your paddle in and make a, a splash. Well, we always had a boat or two here. Four years ago now, I um, saw some canoes coming down and they said, oh, can we stop and have our lunch, please? We said, yes, help come, yes. And so we chatted and they were Hereford County Canoe Club. I thought, oh, this is just what I want. So at, at the age of 70, I joined the canoe club. We will canoe the Y from Glacebury right the way down to Chepstow, plus the tributaries of the Y. Upper lug, lower lug. Every time you go down the river, it's different. You know, some things change, you know, the river levels up or down or, or whatever. Well, we must have fallen in in the canoes and realised that it, it wishes you down and it's very safe, you know. We'll put our arms around each other in a big crocodile. One after other, you drop over the fall. You don't let go of the person in front and it takes you down. Best to do that with a life jacket. If you don't have a life jacket on, then the tendency is the people who are behind you push you down and down and you don't go down quite a way and then you've got to pop back up, you know. So that's good fun. <laughs> Probably more fun than canoeing over the falls. <laughs> we were camping at Hay on Wye at Boatside Farm and in those days my fridge was one of these metal hay boxes and also we had a crate of milk in the river keeping it, it um, cool. When we got up in the morning the river was up and the crate was there, but no bottles. The fridge had gone. That was most of our breakfast. We had bacon and things like that in there. We struck camp and we set off. And I was canoeing with my son, who is now 43, and he must have been about eight at the time. We'd gone about a mile and a mile and a half down to a place called Cabalba. The river goes round a bend and straight towards Clifford Castle. And, and I was thinking to myself, no, if I was a fridge floating down the river, I, I wouldn't follow the course of the river. I, I'd go the shortest route. And as I thought that, I looked. And, and in the, the bushes where the river had been and it had dropped, was sitting my fridge. We got the fridge and we got almost down to Turner's boat. And he said, what's that in the river, Dad? And we went across and there was a, a, a drum, a kind of stainless steel drum. And we pulled the lid off it. And inside, it was somebody's fridge. And it had bacon, it had cheese, and it had two bottles of milk. <laughs> and so the next day, we had double the bacon and double... <laughs> the captain trip had been going on for 100 years, starting at Bradwardine. And we used to come down to um, the Nelson Bridge Solars. We got thrown out of there eventually. The uh, camp at Eaton Bishop, they also threw us out. <laughs> The last few years we now stop at Kenchester and um, we have a mammoth fry up. That belongs to Arthur Ford. All very appetizing. Oh god, we went aground somewhere. I can't I just forget where that was, but way upstream somewhere. And um, one of the tallest members of the club got out of the boat and it was sort of inches deep on a shelf and it was only just above his ankles and one of the smallest members of the club got out the other side of the boat and there was 12 foot of water on the other side and he promptly disappeared <laughs> and came up spluttering. And it was all great laughs, I mean really, uh, although we used to get booze up a bit and it was all a bit light-hearted, there was a certain amount of skill and river craft and knowledge of the river there's only one rock in the middle of the river, and they've hit it. They all knew how to read the V-streams, they knew where to go, they knew how to avoid the big rocks. Oh, he's on his ground. With all my deep and then um, we always got home, yeah. <laughs> well, don't do Just. And it is dangerous, that's why it's an adventure, you know, great fun. Absolutely peaceful, the sound of the birds and Dennis is breathing. Well, we started off in what they call a clinker-built boat. Planks of wood which overlap, um, and they're very heavy. Because those were the pre-war boats they had at the club. When you progressed in those days to senior oars, when you had to have a fine boat. A veneer shell of about eighth of an inch thick made of cedar. One piece.
Now Ooh. they've gone on to... Carbon fibre. We call them polythene boats or Tupperware boats. Like sitting on a pencil very really, yeah. Quicker than the old wooden boats. These days when the boats are that much narrower you've got to be uh, much sharper with your technique to make sure you balance the boat. Encourage the youngsters to row. They are into a sport which is a really healthy sport. I've taught lots of kids to row in the last uh, ten years, probably a couple of hundred. They've got quite a big membership now, especially of juniors. They're well away now, they're winning <laughs> quite a few different regattas. We got them off to a good start. We, well, we revived the club after the war, which is a good thing, and suddenly all appeared again. One old gentleman, he was an engine driver, he grew potatoes down there during the war. <laughs> At that time, anyway, they had a coach called Jack Farmer. And after the war, got around the young fellows that were coming home. He wanted to get a crew and get going again with the Ross Rowing Club, make them active. Um, got a crew up together, and I was one of the first that he called on. He used to send us up to the old railway bridge at Backney, which was about uh, two and a half miles, three miles up the river, so, and row back down again. <laughs> Sometimes you had to go back up again with a wave of the umbrella. He used to coach crews from the bank of the rowing club. So he'd have us going up and down in front of him. And uh, he used to shout at us, literally shout and shout and shout. It was uh, liked by everybody. And he used to strike fear and terror into us kids. He said, you've got to train. If you want to win, you've got to train. He trained us pretty hard, really, but he was an excellent coach. There were a lot of older guys down there then, like that, you know. He was a real character, yeah, absolute star. 1947, we got a fairly good crew up together and we started off on Whit Monday at Harryford and we won our first cup. 48 won maidens and juniors, so we were senior oarsmen. So we had a successful season in 1948, six wins all over the country. It was a record for the club and then in 1949 was the big one for us. Jack coached us to win and the west of England that travels round different regattas. Uh, we won that again at Harryford on the Whit Monday, so that was the first time Ross had ever won it, and unfortunately the last time up to now. It was our peak in the rowing world. I just used to flog up and down the river. I wasn't very good, I was not very stylish, you know. But um, I managed to win at the end of that season at Gloucester. So I won my maidens at Sculling as well. Then I paired up with Howard Copping something like 17 years older than me. We raced uh, open pairs. We had a, a good season of racing. One of the things that I enjoy about rowing is the comradeship with everybody. And you go to other clubs and you're all welcomed as friends. I know you're competitors, but you're still all got friends, like, you know. When the weather is fine, then you know it's a sign for messing about on the river. If you'll take my advice, there's nothing so nice as messing about on the river. There are long boats and short boats and all sorts of craft. There are cruisers and keel boats and boats with no draft. So take off your coat and hop in a boat. Go messing about on the river.